And welcome back, everybody. I'm your host, Super Kami Will. I'm going to skip the usual Greycast introduction because this podcast was sort of unplanned. I, mean, I wasn't even going to make it, and uh, Brendan was the one who told me, hey, you should make a podcast about what I'm going to talk about right now, the uh, WWE releases from today. So today, WWE released 20-plus active wrestlers from their roster. Some of them, I mean, not even just wrestlers. Like, they released referees, producers. They released a bunch of names. And I didn't know when to make this because when Brennan said to make it, they were still actively firing. I mean, they fired, like, people for around two hours. News was coming out, I think, about who was being fired. And then the rumor is that tonight, after NXT, more people, or people from the NXT brand, will be fired. So, who knows what's going to happen. But I just want to talk about the reasonings, what's going to happen to some of these people. So, the firing the firing is of people who I think you kind of knew. If they had to fire someone, they'd fire these people. They fired mostly people who barely get TV. They fired people they don't usually use. People who are on maybe one televised Raw or SmackDown a, a year. Or barely even. I mean, I know the Colognes, Primo and Epico Cologne were fired. And I mean, for the past five years, I think they have less than ten matches on TV. So you can understand why. I, it's a terrible situation, by the way. Uh, I personally, I don't think WWE needed to fire these people. They're not really hurting financially. I mean, they are hurting financially, but not enough that you'd go, oh yeah, they're just going to fire dozens of people. Especially since at the beginning of this whole epidemic, I think WWE won record stating, we're, we're prepared to take a loss. I think they even said they have like 500 million cash ready so that they're, they're, they were planning to weather the storm, you could say. But then, as I don't know, so, not really, I don't know where. It's been an interesting past two weeks for WWE. You could talk about Vince McMahon and the XFL, and then how he's basically forced the WWE to go back into taping weekly. Florida uh, dubbing them an essential business, like right after Linda McMahon pledged like 18 million to help Florida or something. Uh, it's, it's a lot of shady shit going on in the WWE right now. And then today it was just, you know, you, you felt like the wrestlers were taking the hit. Like, not so much the company, it's the wrestlers. I mean, they're one of the few shows that's still providing active weekly content. I mean, they're wrestling in front of empty arenas, but they're still weekly. They're bringing people in. I mean, that's its own issue. They should have recorded, in my opinion. But they're doing it weekly, and then they just decided to fun fire a bunch of people. Uh, some, like I was saying, some people, I mean, man, they fired Kurt Angle. <laughs> they fired Rusev, they fired Zack Ryder, they fired Maria Kanellis, who I think just had a kid. Like, that's kind of a fuck you. But one of the things I really want to talk about was this wrestler named Drake Maverick. I like Drake Maverick. He was the general manager of the NXT, 205 Live, no, I'm sorry, not NXT, the 205 Live brand, on screen. Not like real general manager, just on-screen general manager. He was formerly known as Rockstar Spud in TNA, or now Impact Wrestling. And he was, he was fired, and then he was told to come in today, as of this recording, uh, the, f the 15th of March. I mean, of April. He was told that he still has to come in and d work. <laughs> Which, I don't know how that what happens when you're like, yeah, so... We're letting you go, but we're going to see you for tonight's taping. That's like, whoa. <laughs> That's a huge fuck you. The fact that he has to go there, see all of his friends that work there, see all people backstage, and everyone's like, just, I mean, he was fired. That's an uncomfortable situation to be in. Like, I, I would never want to be in a situ like, situation like that. I mean, it's unknown if he was forced or if they said, do you still want to do it? I think it's a bad decision to i mean if he gets injured so he's effectively working for wwe without a contract because he was already informed that he was fired unless they said i don't i don't know if they could be like you're fired you know in like six hours i don't think that's how that works so he's effectively working without a contract for them and if he gets injured i mean he could sue them for a lot of money like if something happens to him wwe's in deep shit I don't think he's going to go there and intentionally injure himself, but you have to imagine that he's in an emotional place. I mean, he recently put out a video thanking the WWE and for, you know, allowing him the chance to work there. 
And he was like bawling out crying. It was a very sad video. And a lot of the wrestlers have since then put out videos about like, you know, how they're feeling. I think Rusev pledged 20,000 to more of the behind the stage people who were fired, which is amazing of him. I mean, nice. Uh, I think, I'm not sure. I think the wrestlers were, they weren't bought out of their contract, but they were fired and I think they were given a severance package. Which, I mean, it, I mean, I, I do hope that is the truth. It's better than thinking that the WWE just fired these people, like, out of the blue. It's, like, the worst time to fire them, too. Because, yeah, they're making a lot of money. But, I mean, in the world of active wrestling, you, none of these people have made enough money that they're like, oh, I'm going to retire. At least I don't think they have. They probably have. Like, maybe Rusev. But most of them... You know, they, they have to start working again soon, and they're fired, and there's no indie promotions, obviously, running right now. AEW, Impact, ROH, New Japan Pro Wrestling, other major companies, they're not going to, I doubt they're in the, like, I doubt any of them want to hire right now, because none of them are really running. AEW is technically running weekly, but they all their stuff's taped, so they're not actively looking to seek out wrestlers. Uh, a lot of these people will find work. Rusev, obviously. He'll be a main event or wherever he goes. Zack Ryder, I think, will be picked up. Uh, I mean, so, like, I don't think any of these people are doomed. But I think they're taking a hit right now. It's, well, as it's a lot of people, but no one wants to be fired during this global pandemic. It's terrible what's happened. And I think it's just really shitty of WWE to fire them right now. Because I don't think they need to. Like I stated, I, they're losing money, but they're not... They're not, like, about to go bankrupt or anything. WWE makes... A, WWE, through its TV deals with USA and Fox, they're making billions. Like, they are making a lot of money each year. So I, I don't think there was a need to fire these people. And it's also scummy because WWE is in, like... WWE for the past couple years has adamantly refused to let anyone go of their contract if they asked for it. Because AEW started, so they were buying up people. When that happened, a lot of wrestlers wanted out to go to AEW, and WWE was like, no, 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 you can't go. So to do it now, to fire them when there's no guarantee that they'll get work for the foreseeable future, that's just really scummy. And like, a, and just the fact they don't need to. It's just a, it's a shitty position to put them in. I think it shows... That Vince McMahon, in the past two weeks, he's shown how much of a liability he is to the company. I think he's just making all the wrong decisions. Uh, they had Jerry Lawler, a 70-year-old man, fly in to do weekly tapings, putting him at risk. It's just such... WWE's under such poor leadership right now by Vince McMahon that it's just... I don't know. I mean, they released a lot of good wrestlers that they just have been just... Kept on the sideline. I might have even talked about EC3. What they did to him. They hired him just so another company couldn't get him. And then they basically benched him for like two years. And I know you're, like, you're probably saying to yourself. Oh but you know. Is it such a bad thing to be paid not to do anything? And I mean I'm sure to him it, it was. He's uh, EC3 is a known professional. He likes wrestling. He has a love for the business. I'm sure he wants to go out there and actually do his job to be in interesting storylines, to, to do what he loves, and to basically, you know, get on an, not an olive branch, but the major the major company in the world of professional wrestling hires you. You're thinking, man, I'm in a you know, I'm in a great spot right now, I have a name, people know me. You're gonna go in, you're gonna be at work with all these great wrestlers, and then it's like, no, 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 you're, you know, we don't want, we, we hired you just to just not let you wrestle for anyone else. And then fire him during this pandemic. It's such a, such a dirty move. I think that's it for the podcast. Check in with your local wrestling news websites to keep updated on if there's more firings. I have even, while recording this, looked, I mean, there could have been more firings I'm not aware of. Support any of these wrestlers that you love, you know, a lot of them have YouTube channels, gaming channels, you know, they're going to open up pro wrestling tees, if you want their merch, you know, this is way, one way to support them, follow them, whatever, and, uh, you know, follow us too, next week, 
Next Tuesday will be a Brennan and Gene episode. They're going to review Kingdom Hearts. We'll tease you guys to get you excited. And that's going to be it for this episode. And I am out.